Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and so thrilled to tell you that the CODIS second edition is out on the market back after a big battle with the publisher. We've got the rights back. It's out on both paperback and Kindle, and I think the Kindle price is $2.99 just for a couple of days, so jump up there and get it. It is a biblical thriller of compared to no other book that's out there about the weaponization of DNA and Satan's battle to take out the Levitical line so that Jesus doesn't come back. And also want to tell you to go to our website, ignitinganation.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, put in your email address, and get the first chapter of my new book called The Seven Laws of Abundant Living, Lessons Learned from the Tree of Life. It will change your life when you see that God uses the things of the natural to reveal supernatural truths. It's my pleasure to welcome Faith Blatchford to the program today. Faith is with us for the Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Days on the first Monday of, uh, I'm sorry, the last Monday of every month at the 12 o'clock Central Time hour. She's the author of Winning the Battle for the Night, God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation. She's the founder and president of Age to Come, a nonprofit organization. She's an ordained minister, a graduate of Vassar College, holds a BA in religion. She travels the United States and abroad, speaking in churches, schools, and conferences as an author and a producer of instrumental soaking CDs. Her goal is to be a catalyst for radical, life-changing encounters with the presence of God, whether through preaching, teaching, prophesying, counseling, and coaching or impartation. Next month, I want you to mark your calendars for the last, uh, last Monday of the month, which will also be on the 26th of March for uh, a program dedicated to dream interpretation. I get more emails asking for dream interpretations than almost anything else, and Faith is going to devote the Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Days, entire hour of next month's program to the topic of dream interpretation. Faith Blatchford, author of Winning the Battle for the Night, welcome to the Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Night for Better Days, hosted by you in the well, flesh, thank you. live and in person, Faith Blatchford. It's great to be with you again. The months go fast, don't they? They do. It seems like we've been we've been here and in this setting, uh, and it it comes. It really does come around very very quickly. Uh, do you have plans to be at the uh, NRB National Religious Broadcasters Show this week? No, I'm not. Okay. All right, because I'll be there for my first visit, and uh, I'll get a chance to see some of our regular guests. Uh, we just finished up with Victoria Jackson, formerly from Saturday Night Live. You remember her. Yes. Uh, and Peter Rosenberger, who is the host of our Caregiver Hour, uh, talking about caregiving. And this is uh, the same role you play as the host of the Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Days. So in the last month, I've gotten email after email in regards to our segments with you with requests of how people want you to dedicate your sleep to their dreams and to have a word of knowledge to share with them. And I write them all back and say, I know that can't, Faith can't wait to have a list of people to <laughs> devote uh, to devote uh, 365 names so every night she can devote her sleep to you. No, uh -huh. the message is devote your own night to the Lord and mm -hmm. you'll find that you'll have a better relationship and hear more clearly from God. So what is the message that God has been working in you and through you for our audience for this month's segment? Well, I think there are two things. The first one is to make people aware of a particular day in March, March 16th, which is World Sleep Day. You know, there's a day for everything. There's yes. World Pizza Day. There's World you know, jumping jack day, but World Sleep Day is close to my heart, and it's uh, an event that's been going on for about 10 years, and it has been gathering together groups of people from every nation around the earth to 
focus on this issue of sleep. So on March 16th, you know, everyone is supposed to be tweeting and texting and putting Facebook posts to bring the general population to an awareness of sleep because every day the statistics increase about the number of people who are not getting enough sleep. And part of the problem is lack of awareness. I mean, we kind of think, a lot of people think that sleep, well, that's what babies do. That's what old people do. They drool in their wheelchairs in the nursing home. And yeah, I get plenty of sleep. And yet the statistics are showing that 45% of the health issues of people around the world are related to lack of sleep. That's almost 50%. That's shocking. And yet it's a, a simple, I mean, how simple, how cheap? Sleep. Sleep is cheap. And it can save medical bills. It can save psychiatrist visits because part of the emotional and mental problems that people suffer are also sleep related. I mean, we think what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Am I anxious and I don't sleep? Or am I not sleeping and I'm becoming anxious and depressed? Well, I think medical science is showing it's the latter, that largely our depression and anxiety are uh, maybe the primary cause, maybe lack of sleep. And, I mean, there's no way to actually categorically and emphatically state that, but it is a possibility. And then just from the business standpoint, I mean, it's not just the U.S. businesses that lost $411 billion last year because of the sleep deficits of their employees. But Japan, 138 billion dollars lost because of sleep deficits. Germany, I mean these are small nations compared to the US. Germany, 36 billion dollars. The UK, 35 billion. Canada, 35 billion. So th this isn't just a US issue. So World Sleep Day is trying to, you know, with a loud trumpet, blast out to people, get sleep, go to sleep, get more sleep. So I think one of the issues is this issue of awareness. So what I've done is I have posted on my website, uh, cheap, I mean, it's free, you don't have to buy anything, do anything. Go to my website, faithblatchford.com backslash blog, B-L-O-G. And you will find a quick, easy sleep assessment. And all it does, you answer true and false to a list of 20 questions. And at the end of that, it will give you an idea about whether you have a sleep deficit or not. It was created by a man who's taught, researched on sleep, was a professor at Cornell for years. He taught, I think, 25,000 classes related to sleep. So this is his assessment. It's called the Moss Robbins Sleep Assessment. I'm, I'm so looking, I'm, I just yeah, I'm, encourage... I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, pe people are prone to uh, procrastinate. Mm-hmm. Would you mind if we covered some of these interactively, you and I, and as a 66-year-old adult male, senior citizen, just mm -hmm. had my Medicare physical, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to do this with you. Okay. And, and people can hear uh, because uh, uh, this is real, all right? Question number one and the way you answer these are true or false. Question number one, I often need an alarm clock in order to wake up at the appropriate time. Answer true or false. For me, that's false. I've never had an alarm clock in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. I've I have a circadian clock. I wake up when the light 
Mm -hmm. and I go to sleep when it's dark. Mm -hmm. uh, is that normal for people? Are we finding people are so exhausted that they need to uh, uh, they need an alarm clock? Yes. Probably two-thirds of the people in the U.S. do. Because two-thirds of the people in the U.S. are sleep-deprived. And I tell people when they take this assessment or do this assessment, answer it according to how your spouse, your best friend, your co-worker would answer it for you. Because when we do these assessments, we tend to... Uh, put the good on, you know, oh, yeah, sure, I don't, I, I don't ever do that. So as people answer these questions, just imagine that close friend, that spouse answering this for you. How would they answer true or false? Interesting, uh, because the next one has changed for me. It's often a struggle for me to get out of the bed in the morning. It never used to be, but I just took up playing tennis. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, I've led a, uh, a corporate life since 1973 when I graduated college up until uh, six weeks ago. If, if I was, did any activity, it was playing golf, and that was, mm -hmm. that was a business activity. Other mm -hmm. than that, I lived a very sedentary life because I was either writing books or running organizations, or and that, that mm -hmm. leads itself. I wasn't a runner. I actually was a subscriber to the Proverbs that says, only the wicked run when mm -hmm. no one is chasing them. Mm -hmm. Well, that was like how I justified my not running. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that I have about four or five weeks of playing tennis behind me, and this past week, I played three different times, uh, a mixed doubles, a singles, and then took a clinic. Uh, this morning, I found it was a struggle for me to get out of bed. Uh, right. It wasn't because I was overtired. It's because my legs were feeling it. My, mm -hmm. my glutes were feeling it. My right. body was sore. Uh, but normally, I pop up out of bed bright. Mm -hmm ready ready to take on the day mm -hmm. uh, but I find that there's a lot of people that aren't like that are they exactly that's where you know the double espresso the some of these Red Bull things are uh, the the first thing we reach for uh, you know that's interesting because I just I just read where somebody said that if you drink a Red Bull, it'll put you to sleep. Really? Well, I mean, where, where in the cycle of sleep and awakeness does it put you to sleep? I, I don't know. Because doesn't Red Bull have sugar in it? Well, it has sugar in it, and it's got caffeine in it, and right. uh, all these other things. And I was just so shocked. But they said that one of the ways that you can help yourself uh, fall asleep is to drink a Red Bull before going to bed. And I'm thinking to myself, that's got to be a bunch of yak. Uh, yak. Well, I'd be interested if you can send me the, a link to that because that goes against, you know, everything that I've ever imagined. Yeah, I can't imagine having a monster or a uh, uh, a drink of, la of of that of that kind, um, and and falling asleep when you're taking a stimulant. But but I am wired where I don't drink alcohol because alcohol is a stimulant to me. Mm -hmm. uh, if if uh, at one point in my life, long long time ago, they thought if they gave me a uh, uh, attention awareness, uh, almost in the amphetamine group, like a Ritalin, but this is back in the 60s, mm -hmm. some, something else. But it had the complete opposite effect. It would put me to sleep. Mm. I, I'm, I'm wired. Whatever, whatever, whatever the desired result is, I respond 
the opposite. And so mm -hmm. finally, I have a family practitioner that knows my 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 body, right. my my medical, mm -hmm. uh, which shouldn't everybody know that of what impacts their sleep? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there are. It's it's kind of like a medication, where it say, it lists all the known and the allergic reactions, the main side, ones. Side effects, but right. then if you read down into the small print, it'll say one in a hundred thousand had this reaction, one in two hundred thousand had this reaction. Right. And if you're that one, that's where the reverse is going to be true of whatever it is you're imbibing or taking as a pill or whatever. So knowing how you connect with the fine print is really important. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, weekday mornings, I often hit the snooze bar several times. So that's assuming you have an alarm clock. And yeah. that directly relates to number one. So, yes. it, it, well, I guess the first three are really related because I need an alarm clock. I struggle to get out of bed. So mm -hmm. my response would be to hit the snooze bar. Mm -hmm. I, I often feel tired and stressed out at work. Uh, my answer would be no, I'm a carrier. The mm -hmm. people that work for me are tired mm -hmm. and stressed out, but I'm perfectly relaxed. Uh -huh. Jason, would you agree with that? No. <laughs> All right. I often feel moody and irritable and little things upset me. Uh, you know, for me that that's false. Uh, I, I don't get very moody and irritable. Things don't really, I'm, I'm in live TV. Mm -hmm. Like it's like anything that can happen, like, I, like a, a light mm -hmm. falling from the crashing from the ceiling is like something that is to be expected right um, in live television so right. when it ultimately happens you just go oh sorry ladies and gentlemen <laughs> that was not a bomb that was just uh -huh. a light fell from the ceiling and nobody's hurt so we're just going to go on with the show uh, but people are moody and are mm -hmm. irritable and they don't know why. And then they turn to pharmacia, pharma. Right. Uh, and and you, I think you and I had a discussion about the origin of the word and mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, spiritual connection. Maybe we should revisit what pharma, is it what pharmacia, pharmacia or? I've heard both. Okay. Um, what's the connection to, to um, uh, the, the spiritual warfare aspects of medications used for anxiety, sleep disorder, and uh, um, mood, mood swings? Well, I mean, the word in its original... Uh, its origin relates it to witchcraft and control, manipulation, which, as you know, obviously drugs right. manipulate and control bodily functions, our mind, our emotions. And, you know, and this is always a, a tough thing, Eric, because although we can talk about that, when we know that we have probably two thirds of the population taking some kind of sleep aid, prescription sleep aid, many of them, most of them, because they are unable to sleep. It's what this friend of mine told me one time when I was concerned about a, a belief that this friend of ours had, and he said, don't take away someone's security blanket in their crutch unless you are offering them something stronger that will take the place and I find it's it is not I don't think it's the Jesus compassion when I it's like the woman caught in adultery right. he could have condemned her for her lifestyle instead he offered 
forgiveness and compassion and a power for a redeemed life. So in in identifying, you know, sleep aids, thank God that people can get some relief. But this is why this program, my book, Winning the Battle for the Night, God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelations, World Sleep Day are so important to help people become educated about the value, the power of sleep, how it's we're wired for sleep, and that God can heal. He can heal our messed up circadian clocks. He can heal our insomnia. He can heal our restless legs. He can heal our sleep apnea. He can heal our emotions that open the door to nightmares and create a need for immediate relief, which people reach for the medicine cabinet. And I want people to reach for God's medicine cabinet, which is the truth, the promises of the word of God for sleep, for uh, healing, because people need to be healed. I mean, there are medical negative health outcomes because of lack of sleep. So people need to be healed. And that's what I want to offer people is hope for healing of the sleep issues, that there's something more powerful than Ambien. And that's what we're all about. And getting the message out and praying for people and helping them change their routine, their lifestyle. You know, this this test, this this inventory we're taking, which is uh, the Moss Robbins Alertness Questionnaire, uh, you know, the next question after moody and irritable and little things upset me, I have trouble concentrating and remembering. Mm -hmm. You know, as we age, and, and, and I'll, I'll share with you that uh, a week ago Monday, I went in for my Medicare demanded physical. They, mm -hmm. they demand that you go to the doctor once a year. And uh, they gave me, he said, now during this process, I'm going to give you a memory test. I'm going to give you three words. And then later on during the examination, I'm going to ask you to repeat back to me the three words. And so he went through a whole series of other things. And he said, what are those three words? And here was my response. Mm -hmm. They're the same three words you gave me last year. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he uh -huh. said, really? And I said, yes, you gave me um, bag, box, and tree last year. This year you gave me bag, box, and tree. And it's the same three words you gave me last year. Are you concerned now about my memory? And he goes, he puts a little side note. He says, never ask this guy a memory question again. <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of puts a little, foot, a little footnote of the chart. That if I could remember what he asked me a year ago, uh -huh. I, I, there's no problem with my memory. Now, right. I, I attribute a lot of this to, since you coming on um, the program, um, I've become so much more aware of sleep and I've been so much more openly speaking about mm -hmm. the idea of sleep and the, the um, we had Tim Timmons on. I don't know if you know Tim Timmons' music. Yes. Tim Timmons, musician diagnosed with incurable cancer 14 years ago. He created the 10,000 minute movement. Uh, you're in church for 80 minutes. What are you going to do in the other 10,000 minutes? And it occurred to me, and I didn't bring it up during my interview with him because it would have diminished by one third mm -hmm. uh, the 10,000 minutes uh, by, by taking uh, 160 plus 42, 192 minutes out of his 10,000 minutes a day. Uh, multiplying by seven, so there's like a thou over a thousand minutes that should be of that ten should be devoted to sleep. But I didn't want to do that by right. do doing the math game with them and saying, well, really, it's not the ten thousand minutes; it's the eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-two minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but 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 I was aware, and my mind was kind of working like that, saying, well, wait a second. My relationship with Faith Blatchford and my reading of her book and my understanding now of the importance of sleep. 
I now anoint and devote and, and I pray differently and my Bible reading time is different and, and mm -hmm. my, my whole approach to the night, I can't, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, what do you have in store for me tonight? Right. And, uh, uh, and, and this is kind of an important question. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm single. I have a little 12 pound dog that sleeps on the bed with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, like a pack, pack, you know, the little animal pack sleeps, the, the, the dog, the wolf pack sleeps together. So she, her back is against my back. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and if she moves in the night, um, I come from a complete, maybe even a REM state, just a little bit out of it to, to know, to have some kind of external stimuli. And then I usually go right back mm -hmm. deeper in. But it also triggers my dream content changes. Sometimes it's in the middle of a dream. Mm -hmm. And it's an event that's woven in. Sometimes it takes me out of a dream completely and I don't remember it. And other times it takes me into a whole new realm. And... Mm -hmm. You know, I could, people could say, well, it's not healthy to sleep with your pet or your pet interrupts your sleep cycle. Well, my dog belongs to the Lord, too. Mm -hmm. And my Lord is sovereign over my dog, too. And mm -hmm. if this is something that he has not told me scripturally, don't let your animal sleep, don't let your pet sleep on the mm -hmm. bed with you, mm -hmm. and I'm not violating any biblical principle, then mm -hmm. God can use my pet Mm -hmm. huddling up with me in the night and mm -hmm. and I've, I've I've seen an impact so we've got to go to break but when we come back from break I kind of want to address that people who uh, uh, have their pets and positive negative neutral or can God use it and don't don't get caught up in the details uh, we'll be back. We'll be back in just a few minutes as we continue our conversation with Faith Blatchford, author of Winning the Battle for the Night, God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation, founder and president of Age to Come, uh, and host of the Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Days, right here on Revealing the Truth. We'll be right back. back. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, Executive Director of Ignatic Nation and host of the daily TV program, Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Ignatic Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, We've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the Books and Media page on our website, www dot ianbn dot com. There you can find a direct link to the book you want to order and we receive a small commission directly from Amazon. There is no cost to you for this service. In addition to our daily teachings and interviews, we make available to you the archive of all of the interviews on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Our live program is available from our homepage and there is never a charge to you for any of this access. We made the decision long ago that we would remain a commercial free resource that would not be influenced by any pressure from any outside company. There are only two ways that we are able to continue to operate this ministry and provide you with the only live four hour daily Christian television talk show program. The first is through your support and tax deductible contributions to Igniting a Nation. These can be made directly through the donate button on the website or sent through the mail to Igniting Nation, 2700 Corporate Drive, Suite 120, 
Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. The other way we support the program is by offering you a unique opportunity to have access to over 10 years worth of teachings on a subscription basis. The teaching archives contains all of my prior sermons, Torah studies, prophecy in the news videos, and much more for the low subscription price of $5 per month. This subscription grants you unlimited access to over 800 hours of content not available elsewhere and is updated weekly with the most current prophecy classes. In addition to 20 hours of original TV programming each weekday, we invite you to join us live every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings for our Prophecy in the News classes. The times and locations are listed on our events page on the website www.ianbn.com. Every day you and I are faced with the challenge of where we will go to hear the truth. We are committed to bring you the only program of its kind that covers the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. We cannot do this without your support. Since we launched on January 5, 2017, we have aired over 300 individual teachings, interviews, and commentaries not available anywhere else. We are now working side by side with almost every major Christian publishing house to bring you the most in-depth feature interviews possible. Our one-hour features address every subject that affects the believer's life. We are hearing of salvations from the Middle East, Africa, and all across the United States. Lives are being changed every day, and we have only just begun. Our mission is to become your trusted resource and grant you access to the people, tools, and information you need to grow in your relationship with the Lord. You can help us by liking us on social media and through your financial support. We know you have many choices in who you support, but we are prayerfully asking you to consider helping us keep revealing the truth, true to our calling, to cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth like no other program available. Donate today and help us bring the message to the four corners of the earth. Visit www.ianbn.com and donate, buy a book, or subscribe to our teaching archives. Without you, we do not exist. Back. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, Executive Director of Ignatica Nation and host of the daily TV program Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Ignatica Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, we've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the Books and Media page on our website, www.ianbn.com. There you can find a direct link to the book you want to order, and we receive a small commission directly from Amazon. There is no cost to you for this service. In addition to our daily teachings and interviews, we make available to you the archive of all of the interviews on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Our live program is available from our homepage, and there is never a charge to you for any of this access. We made the decision long ago that we would remain a commercial free resource that would not be influenced by any pressure from any outside company. There are only two ways that we are able to continue to operate this ministry and provide you with the only live four hour daily Christian television talk show program. The first is through your support and tax deductible contributions to Igniting a Nation. These can be made directly through the donate button on the website or sent through the mail to Igniting a Nation, 2700 Corporate Drive, Suite 120, Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. The other way we support the program is by offering you a unique opportunity to have access to over 10 years worth of teachings on a subscription basis. 
The teaching archives contains all of my prior sermons, Torah studies, prophecy in the news videos, and much more for the low subscription price of $5 per month. This subscription grants you unlimited access to over 800 hours of content not available elsewhere and is updated weekly with the most current prophecy classes. In addition to 20 hours of original TV programming each weekday, we invite you to join us live every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings for our Prophecy in the News classes. The times and locations are listed on our events page on the website www.ianbn.com. Every day you and I are faced with the challenge of where we will go to hear the truth. We are committed to bring you the only program of its kind that covers the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. We cannot do this without your support. Since we launched on January 5, 2017, we have aired over 300 individual teachings, interviews, and commentaries not available anywhere else. We are now working side by side with almost every major Christian publishing house to bring you the most in-depth feature interviews possible. Our one-hour features address every subject that affects the believer's life. We are hearing of salvations from the Middle East, Africa, and all across the United States. Lives are being changed every day, and we have only just begun. Our mission is to become your trusted resource and grant you access to the people, tools, and information you need to grow in your relationship with the Lord. You can help us by liking us on social media and through your financial support. We know you have many choices in who you support, but we are prayerfully asking you to consider helping us keep revealing the truth, true to our calling, to cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth like no other program available. Donate today and help us bring the message to the four corners of the earth. Visit www.ianbn.com and donate, buy a book, or subscribe to our teaching archives. Without you, we do not exist. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with Faith Blatchford, author of Winning the Battle for the Night, God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation, and she is the host of The Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Night Days, right here on the United Nation Broadcasting Network on Revealing the Truth on the last Monday of every month at the 12 o'clock Central Time Hour. Faith, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Eric. You know, I described to you when we were going ready to go to break that uh, I sleep with my little 12-pound affin pincher that just curls up with her back towards me, back to back, mm -hmm. and it impacts at times, not every mm -hmm. night, but at times impacts my sleep pattern. Uh, one might say she disrupts it. I'd rather think that God is sovereign and he would use uh, whatever that was and is that, that triggered whatever the next dream was. I've become much more conscious that I used to tell you, and when I first met you, I said, I don't think I dream. And mm -hmm. you said, I don't think I believe you. Uh, you're just mm -hmm. not aware of your dreams. You just mm -hmm. haven't gotten into a sleep pattern or a spiritual mindset where you are open to the mm -hmm. fact that you and everybody are active dreamers. Mm -hmm. uh, if we don't hit that REM state, if we don't get into that deep sleep, then we will manifest all kinds of physical maladies, emotional mm -hmm. maladies, uh, spiritual maladies. And mm -hmm. since I seem to have it somewhat together, I must be sleeping okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but for those that, that uh, have a pet, uh, is there, is, there uh, is that good, bad, indifferent, uh, God's sovereign, so what difference does it make? That question, you know, a dog is man's best friend. And so that question is loaded. Uh, it, it's kind of like when a woman asks her husband, do I look fat right. in this? And so sidestepping the answer to that because, I mean, we can read articles and books and from science and medicine that make comments about, 
sleeping with pets, the same as sleeping with children. I mean, it's, and I think it's, the issue is not what am I sleeping with? The issue is what kind of sleep am I getting? And the sleep assessment, when we see am I sleep deprived, then we have to look at our life and our habits and our actions and think, okay, is there something I need to change? Rather than it's, it's like targeting medication, that's evil. Sleeping with your dog, that's evil. Doing this, you know, it's really not about a judgment call on a particular behavior. It's assessing how am I doing, bottom line, and then what can I do to become more in sync with God's design for sleep, for the benefit of my body, my mind, my emotions, and my spirit? That's such, it's such a great answer. If, if I'm not having, if I've taken this sleep assessment, and my assessment is, is, is I'm sleeping just fine, then I really don't have to go through a checklist of things I need to eliminate, add, or delete. Mm-hmm. If, if I'm feeling good, I'm thinking clearly, I'm spiritually centered, um, I don't have these, what I might call a list of symptoms of, mm-hmm. of, of a troubled or challenging mm-hmm. sleep mm-hmm. existence. Uh, but we also know that God uses sleep to release in us uh, enzymes, hormones, endorphins, which we cannot produce unless we are unconscious. Right. And that's in the dopamines. Uh, You know, I'm single, and they say that when you have a pet, when your dog looks at and and dogs are the only animals that will make direct eye contact Mm -hmm. uh, with a human being, Mm -hmm. that it releases oxytocin in both the animal and in the person. Mm -hmm. So oxytocin is what we, our bodies generate when we have human touch to touch, body Mm -hmm. to body, physical contact, our body produces oxytocin, kind Mm -hmm. of, kind of the love chemical, if you will. Um, You know, this may very well be not my eye to eye, but my physical contact that that allows me to live the life I live and serve the Mm -hmm. way I serve and not feel uh, lonesome or lonely or suffer with aloneness. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, I I feel like I have uh, companionship. I I do lots of things with people as well. I'm not, it's not me as a hermit with my dog Then I come on on the show and then run back into the darkness of the night. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there are people that do struggle with these areas. Uh, they can't fall asleep without watching TV. Uh, mm-hmm. They do fall asleep in, uh, look, now, look, I, I will tell you, I will fall asleep in a boring lecture mm-hmm. in a warm room. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a child, I did that a lot uh, mm-hmm. in, in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would stay up all night with a flashlight underneath right. the covers reading a book right. that was not a symptom of me being a bad behavior child it was a symptom of the fact that i would stay up till four or five o'clock in the morning i didn't days of the week didn't matter to me if i had a book that i was interested in i was under that cover with a flashlight you know yes l- lights out. i was too <laughs> yeah light lights out meant they turned the light switch on the wall as soon right. as their as soon as Get their your foot, flashlight right their foot and you could cover it where <laughs> The room was dark, but you were there. That was the right. kid. That was the kid that I was, and people can relate to that. But as an adult, uh, middle-aged adult, or in the case of statistical senior citizen adult, which is absurd, uh, you know, even even today, I would I would nod off at a lecture. That's why I don't go to lectures. Mm-hmm. I'll hear a preaching, but I don't do a, a whole lot of of, of a conference attendance where I have to mm-hmm. sit through eight speakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I'd rather have a root canal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we approach 
Uh, this identifies that you are, uh, if it says if you've answered true to four or more of these statements, consider yourself seriously sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the point of this is awareness. Because as we said at the beginning of the broadcast, people, you know, oh yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And they, we don't even take time to evaluate because life is so busy, we have so many responsibilities and things we have to do and we're in a routine and a habit that we don't take time to step back and look at it and say, okay, how am I doing in this? The assessment, I mean, we have evaluations at work our employers do work evaluations students take tests you go to a doctor for a checkup but when it comes to our sleep we i mean nobody ever evaluates and that's why we're in such deep trouble in terms of the statistics on lack of sleep because nobody's ever taught us and nobody ever takes an assessment so that's why this is so important to see where where are we and then we can take steps one get my book read the book winning the battle for the night um to find out how to change your routine what god's intention is how to make those changes for you and for your child um, because a lot of this i mean if teachers did this assessment in school in high school I would imagine probably almost 100% of the students would be seriously sleep deprived. And that information should go home to the parent. Right. That's very, that, that, that is so very true. Now, Faith, for our audience that doesn't know your story, your story was birthed out of jealousy of other people's sleep. You thought you had to be, if I was sleeping, I was unproductive. If I was sleeping, exactly. I wasn't working for the kingdom. If I was sleeping, I was wasting valuable yes. time that, that uh, what do you mean you're gonna go to sleep? All right, there's mm -hmm. work to be done. Right. And they would come out with uh, telling you about dreams that they had or visions that they had. And, all of a sudden you came to a crossroads where you said, I wasn't having any of those. Right. And I got jealous. Mm -hmm. I started feeling like I was missing out on something. And so you went on a campaign to find out what this sleep thing was all about. I don't think I've ever heard in my life a teaching on sleep. Mm -hmm. I know. It's, I mean, it's, it really it's when you begin to look into it and you see all of God's intention for sleep. I mean, when we look at it from the medical, the biological, physiological aspect, I mean, the way God designed the body would make a believer out of the most hardened atheist if they were really being totally objective, which no atheist is totally objective. Uh, because they have a mindset, but when just looking at the body of how important sleep is the main factor in health and the, the smooth running of the machine, but who teaches on sleep? And then you look at it from the spiritual, and that to me is, I mean, that's what I was after. I, I learned about the body, and then I thought, oh my gosh, you know, God forgive me, body forgive me, but then realizing what God intends in terms of my soul, my spirit, and the interaction, the communion, and the instruction and revelation that people we're missing out on. We are being robbed. So the church should be the ones from, you know, the nursery level through to the you know hundred year old people right. visiting this issue of sleep because we're being robbed and I was robbed of my body was robbed but my spirit was robbed and uh, that is something I'm on a mission you know I 
give myself the name Sleep Ambassador for God because this really is God's heart to be able to equip, empower, and inspire his children for their assignment on earth. And without the sleep piece, uh, we're going to fail in our assignment on this earth. I mean, we'll either die young, die sick, and be clueless as far as what we're supposed to do with this earth that God gave us to steward. We will not be the game changers, the influencers to change and bring heaven to earth without sleep. Right. One of the things you do on your website is you collect testimonies from people who have shared their testimony. You shared your testimony on our first episode. Uh, maybe you could recall uh, one that comes to mind that a person who had this either issue mm -hmm. or uh, night terrors or whatever their issue was, uh, maybe you can share their testimony with us because this is the real application. This mm -hmm. is where the rubber meets the road mm -hmm. as to whether or not there's actual transformation or is this just another uh, area of self-help that uh, nobody, uh, nobody else has, has, has become the sleep expert, so it'll be me and, and the guy that does my pillow. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you two will be the, the, the two sleep experts. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I think that is um, more and more I'm getting feedback from people uh, who have struggled. I, I got an email recently with, from someone who uh, dealt with nightmares and the sleep deficit as a result of the nightmares and had no idea about the connection between nightmares and the demonic, the door being opened through unforgiveness. Hmm. And she read the book, realized that she was going to bed with a lot of unresolved emotional baggage that involved unforgiveness. And that's what Paul says in Ephesians, don't go to bed angry because you give a foothold to the enemy. It means I send up into the night sky a big spotlight that says calling all demons, not calling all angels, calling all demons. And they have a legal right to torment when I entertain unforgiveness. And so this lady, I mean, I devote quite a bit of time in the book to this whole issue of how the enemy has access to us. He only has legal access when we're in unforgiveness or believing a lie. So this lady was living in unforgiveness. And it became, you know, you weigh it out. Do I want to live in unforgiveness and just you know, feed off of that anger, bitterness, resentment, which we do. It's like a stimulant. Or do we want to have a good night's sleep? And so she weighed it out and she decided, okay, you know, I'm going to forgive and let's just see what happens. You know, test it. Get rid of all that baggage. She did. And it was so astonishing to her that the nightmares stopped. And this is something, I mean, I, I think people, as they become adults, they become ashamed and reticent to admit that they have nightmares and night terrors because, you know, that's you're supposed to grow out of that. Right. We think, well, kids have it. But adults, there are lots of adults who suffer in silence and in shame, and they don't have to. Well, the answer is they're going to find in winning the battle for the night God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation, written by Faith Blatchford. You can find her at faithblatchford.com. If you want to take the sleep assessment, it's faithblatchford.com backslash blog. Take that test for yourself. Answer those questions honestly. And if you are struggling, if you're answering four yeses, that's me, that describes me, look to two sources, 
first of all, the Bible. Okay, mm -hmm. look for that truth. What is it that's that's a blockage to you being able to enter in and surrender completely to the presence of God and subject mm -hmm. yourself to being unconscious? And two, use the tool that faith is written, which is a tool, a handbook, a guide, a reference point, winning the battle for the night, God's plan for sleep, dreams, and revelation. When we come on next month, we're going to talk about dream interpretation. So mark your calendars for uh, March the 26th at 12 o'clock p.m. Central Time. We're going to devote the entire segment to dream interpretation. Faith Blatchford, thank you so much for being with us again for The Sleep Project, Better Nights for Better Days, and for authoring such an extremely timely and important work called Winning the Battle for the Night, God's Plan for Sleep, Dreams, and Revelation. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And to our audience, we will be going off the air, off our live Facebook feed uh, broadcast, but that just moves over into the video section. You can catch us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you can't catch us in the video archive on Facebook, find us on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, or go to www.ianbn.com or ignitinganation.com. I'm going to be headed to Nashville, Tennessee, so you're going to get the best of uh, revealing the truth over the next couple of days, but it'll give you a chance to catch up on some interviews that are sure to change your life, which is our message of the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. And